Hey, let me ask you something. Do you ever use these audio programs to learn a language, like Pimsleur or something like that? Well, let me tell you some tips about how to use them in ways that you get more mileage out of them, because it can be really frustrating to dump a lot of time into something like Pimsleur and just not be able to say anything that you've heard from it. So, anyway, by the way, I'm Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com and I thought of this while I was listening to a Pimsleur tape. I don't normally do it on the road and I'm really feeling the lack of benefit because I'm not doing it the way that I normally would, but sometimes you've got to squeeze your language learning in in different ways so that you're getting it in every day. And uh, today's one of those days because it's rainy and it's just like, ah, do I really feel like doing the most effective way? No. So am I going to do some way? Yes. And uh, then, so I was thinking about you. And so, okay, so you got Pimsleur or some equivalent audio program. You know, the kind of thing where you are sitting in an airport and you want to say hello to Mrs. Ching or whatever, right? So you're listening to that, and the way that most people do it is they, you know, maybe they sit there, listen, they do it while they're doing the dishes, or they do it while they're walking like I have been this morning, which is completely, I think, less effective than anything could ever possibly be. Uh, yeah, there's just different, different ways of doing it. But imagine that this scenario. You've got uh, your language learning audio on, and you've got one of these little things, which is a button that lets you pause the recording whenever that you like, and you're at a cafe, or you're at your desk, a uh, standing desk, hopefully, because sitting desks are death, a new cancer, as they say. I can't sit anymore, I'm always at a standing desk, but, uh, or I'm on the couch, or, or sometimes I'm in bed, but uh, rarely on the couch, because that's just like softer form of sitting. It's like uh, cigarettes with uh, filters. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you're, 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 at a cafe, let's say, and uh, you have a notebook open, ideally your memory journal, ideally your magnetic memory method optimized journal, which if you're interested in, check that out at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash masterclass, which is where you'll learn all about that stuff. And uh, you can uh, have it open and draw a memory palace. And memory palace is, you know, just an organizational device where you're going to use mnemonic imagery, crazy cows and chickens and Bruce Lee and whatever comes to mind to help you associate sounds and meanings with images. So that when you look at a station in the memory palace and you see something really wacky, you know, you're going to be able to recall the sound and the meaning of the word that you memorized there. And of course, with Pimsleur, you're not you're not always uh, co concentrating on individual words. You're often doing phrases, words in context, which is great, which is great, and it's important. But also, words are units; they're individual units, and you want to focus on them. So when Pimsleur or the equivalent program feeds you a word, then bada bing, bada bang, you can uh, focus on that and then and think of it in in the context of a sentence. So there you are. You're in the cafe. You've got your memory journal open, totally optimized and you draw a memory palace. Now, why not use the cafe that you're in just to get started? And the recording says to you, okay, imagine that you are in an airport and you are, you want to say, excuse me, to Mrs. Uh, Ching. Now, what are you going to do? Well, normally, you would just listen to it, they would tell you how to say it in the target language that you're studying, and then you repeat it. But imagine that you have your memory palace, you've all charted it out perfectly, you've drawn it, you have all the stations assigned, and then you create an image that lets you recall the sound and the meaning of what it is to say in that language, excuse me. And you really focus on it, and I'm not talking hours of work, I'm talking 20, 30 seconds, maybe three minutes max. You get this wild, crazy image going, and it's in the corner of the cafe, you can actually see it, it's right there. And uh, you can imagine and paint it in there or whatever, feel it. Don't necessarily rely on visual things. You can get into all kinds of uh, kinesthetic emotions and sounds and all this kind of stuff to help you bring that target information back. And then what you do is you press play again. Like you pause it after that they give you this and then you make the imagery and then you play it. And then so when they prompt you, Instead of using the space allotted, because they'll give you a, an amount of space before they play the answer, pause it again, look in your mind where you place that imagery, like in the corner of the cafe, decode it, and then write down on your piece of paper what you have decoded 
from that imagery, right? So this is very, very powerful. And now, you know, you might not know how to spell the word in that language. That's okay. Just spell it the way you think you would spell it if that language was written with a English alphabet, and it may well be written with a, a Latinate alphabet that is similar or the same as the English alphabet. Just try this, right? And do this. So now a half hour recording uh, of Pimsleur or a similar program is going to become about an hour. Now you don't have to sit there and do this for half an hour. Do it in 10 minute chunks, do it in 15 minute chunks, whatever. But do it so that you're not doing it the way the program tells you to do it, which is to listen, be prompted, use the space, which is, you know, like a 20 second space of silence to recall the information, which is going to make you feel rushed. And then uh, you could go on to the next thing and just kind of like pile through using their spaced repetition program. Now, the spaced repetition, there's nothing wrong w with it in and of itself. It's just that you're compressing your recall time into their agenda. But you don't want to do that. What you want to do is pause and then get your hands involved. Get your memory palace involved. Get your imagination involved. Ask your imagination to assist you and then write it down. And so this is a great way to maximize the effectiveness of a recording like this. And, you know, you could, if you're using uh, one of the pod series, like French pod, China po Chinese pod, whatever, you can do that as well. It's a little bit of a different setup because they are speaking a lot of English in those programs, which is why, you know, they're good to go through, but they're not necessarily... The, all of these things have... Uh, oh, good, thank you for turning that off. They saw that we were recording, you and I talking together, and so they turned themselves off, which is very lovely. Um, but you know what I'm saying, the... the the, the, the thing is, is that you can do this, you can get more out of these programs, you're not wasting your time, and if you do it with something like Pimsleur that is a minimum of your mother tongue and a maximum of the target language, whereas like some of the other programs are a maximum of your mother tongue and a minimum of the actual language, you can get so much mileage out of this. Anyway, just a tip for you, give it a try, let me know if you do, how it works for you, and uh, if you need help, using the mnemonics, check out magneticmemorymethod.com or go directly to the masterclass for the full training, which is magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash masterclass. You know, once you have these secret formulas, once you're in on the secrets, it's absolutely amazing how fast you can learn and memorize and recall anything that you like just with great, great ease. And it's, you know, it's not necessarily that it's always easy, to tell you the truth. There is effort. There is sometimes a bit of a fight, a little bit of a struggle. Just like when you get good at a skill, like a, a particular fitness skill or whatever, there's still effort involved in getting yourself to, to do it and to push and to train. So what are you going to do? Kissing takes effort, but it's great. It's really great. It's especially great when you can kiss in another language. Anyway, we're getting all foggy here, so I, I guess I guess the kissing theme has 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 arrived. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go think more about kissing, and we'll catch you later. And until then, keep magnetic. Bye bye.